Hi everybody and welcome to my new studio. I took some time and played around with the wall and um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love pegboard and naturally you already know if you've been following for a while that I love color and this is a really great opportunity to combine these two great loves into a display that is both useful and absolutely a joy to see every day when I walk into my studio. So let me show you how I did this. I did not used to like pegboard. I have, however, changed my mind. <laughs> so here in my weaving studio, I have a pegboard that is four feet by eight feet. And I purchased hooks on Amazon. If you buy them in a big box store locally, they can be very expensive. But if you buy them in 50 packs, on Amazon and they are much more reasonable. So I had some hooks left over from doing this project. And by the way, this is, um, I painted this pegboard black and that kind of takes away the little polka dots, which I really, really love. And I just love what it does in this room. I love that I can see my yarn as, I'm, as I want to work with it. I just really, really, really love this. And so when I was thinking about having pegboard in the upstairs studio, I was like, you know, I think I'm going to have to do that. I think I'm going to have to do this again. <laughs> so because this is such a positive experience for me, so useful, keeping it so, keeping my yarn so organized, but so accessible so that I can use it, because that is such a positive experience for me as I'm weaving, I was really ready to do another round of pegboard. <laughs> So naturally, I completely went down the rabbit hole on Pinterest, looking at the different ways people have done pegboard for a workshop, and in my case, a textile studio. So I got a lot of ideas by doing that, of course. And then I decided, well, you know, it's really just time to dive in and just see what happens. So that's what I did. So naturally, checking out Pinterest, one of the first things I thought of doing for the pegboard was getting a thread rack. Now, the sewing machine is right here in front of a, a lot of natural light. And so naturally, you should put a thread rack right here, right? <laughs> well, as I thought about that, I thought, you know, I'm not gonna go that route because it is by a window. I thought the thread would just fade and it would start looking kind of gross and I wouldn't be happy with it. And you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to waste any supplies. So then I thought, you know, I'm going to need to be looking for another option. And so that's one thing um, to be thinking about in this process. One of the things I used to do in my office downstairs was to use these whiteboard clipboards and just hang them on the wall and keep my to-do lists on them and that kind of thing. Uh, Unfortunately, what ended up happening was that I got overwhelmed looking at this, these boards that showed me how much work I needed to get done and had, you know, couldn't get done in a day anyway. And so I finally ended up just taking them all down and it felt like such a relief not to have these to-do lists staring at me all the time. However, <laughs> the goal is to make a capsule wardrobe of really artsy, fun, expressive clothing. And the only way I know to achieve that is to actually do a little planning. So here we are back to the clipboards. <laughs> and quite honestly, one of the things I really want to try to do is limit the number of projects I have in the air at any given time because I'm really good at buying cloth for projects that don't exist yet. <laughs> and I need to not do that. I really need to use up the cloth that I have. All of these resources that I've collected over the years, um, just little bits and pieces from here and there that I saw such amazing potential in. I need to make things from what I have rather than buying new stuff. So <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, using clipboards will be a way to kind of keep track of what I'm doing, what I need in order to finish that project, or you know, just be able to kind of do a little bit of planning as I go along. I'm hoping that this will be a help and not just make me feel overwhelmed by everything that I want to get done. But there's so much joy in this textile journey for me that I'm really hoping that I can keep my mindset in a way that using the clipboards is a positive thing. So we'll see. So the first thing I'm gonna do 
is put up a row of clipboards across the bottom. Uh, across the bottom because it because they will be below eye level and what I'm hoping is that they will just kind of fade in <laughs> I will um, they will be at my fingertips and useful but not be like the focal point of the wall that's what I'm hoping okay I also have discovered that okay this is the hook I have you see that okay if I put these on this hook, they hang out from the wall, they move, there's just too much happening there. So, so I found some wire to wire cutter and I'm going to kind of play around with uh, making my own hook for these. They don't need to hold a lot of weight. Uh, they may, you know, it may hold a pattern, it may hold um, some papers possibly, some drawings maybe, but I don't think it's really gonna, I don't think these hooks are gonna actually be holding a lot Primarily what I do is use dry erase markers and draw on them, you know, make notes to myself. So I don't think it's going to take a, need a lot of weight in the wall. So I think I'll be okay with just making little hooks and hanging them that way. So let's go ahead and put some clipboards on the wall. I discovered that in order to get the clipboards to hang flat, that I needed a little bit of space here for the clipboard thingy. See, because there's, there's this um, little tab on the top of these things. So they don't hang flat unless there's actually enough space for that tab. Why don't you love my, my paint finger? Okay, so they, I've discovered that the clips, that the hooks that I'm making need to look like so. Okay, so hopefully that will help you if you are um, planning on trying something like this. Okay, it seems like this is kind of close to the middle of the room, so I decided to put two pairs of scissors here, and I've also got a, a pair of scissors down here close to my sewing machine, so that way I think that's gonna feel like I've got scissors handy no matter what. So basically what I've done is right through this section, <laughs> has eight boards that are for projects that are in process at the moment. And then I have one down on the end that I intend to use for planning for my capsule wardrobe so that I can kind of keep track of where I'm at, what I need to make yet, and that kind of thing. I um, created a class called Practically Tiny. It's for tiny house people who are um, using a capsule approach to their wardrobe capsule kitchen and a capsule self-care. So I created um, printouts that are really useful for planning that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is just go to my class and print out one of my printouts and then go ahead and fill in the spots of what it is I need to make in order to have this crazy fun, history bounding, artsy, a little bit couture, a little bit recycled, a lot recycled, um, kind of capsule wardrobe in the end. So that one right there is probably for planning. So I think this is gonna be fun. Okay, what's next? That's actually a good question, what's next? <laughs> I woke up this morning with an idea and that is to take picture frames that I've collected over the years and use them on the wall as a way to define spaces. I realize that probably doesn't make much sense, but um, I've got some picture frames, like this is just a plastic thing that I painted and it doesn't have any hooks or anything on the back to hang it with and so it's just kind of this crazy, which I thought has been kind of fun. I painted this years ago and added some fun color to it, but I have all these picture frames that I have collected and never really found the right thing to put them in, no, I mean, I never really found the right way to use them. I originally thought maybe I would paint them all white and use them in a grouping on the wall in the living room. Well, it turns out I had, <laughs> we ended up putting, um, we ended up putting the casework from an 1800s pipe organ in the living room. And uh, <laughs> I mean, there's no way to beat that. So basically I have scrounged around in um, all of the chaos and found my all of the frames that I can get my hands on. There might be more somewhere else, I don't know. 
Um, but basically what I'm going to do is just play with them on the wall a little bit until I have something that I'm happy with. I know from my yarn wall downstairs that it works out really well for me to go from, to do a kind of a color progression all the way across. It gives the whole thing kind of a cohesive feel, at least that works really well for me. So that's one of the things that I'm going to try to do is to, and I have a couple of cans of spray paint, so if something isn't currently the right color, I can just give it a rattle can coat and make it the color I want it. So I'm going to play with this for a while and see where that gets me. I have, you can see there's a hook right here. <laughs> it's my intention to put another shelf or something in this next row above those. Um, so I want enough clearance for this stuff that I'm not, um, yeah, I just want enough clearance between the stuff I have in mind for that middle zone. So I'm, I've got a hook in the wall right there and I'm gonna try to keep everything at that level or higher. Okay, so let's give this a whirl and see how it goes. I realized when I was looking through my frames that I needed a blue, so I got out, my hubby had a can of blue, so I used the rattle can and sprayed this one blue. And then I have this piece of artwork that I found that I just realized it would be really cool to have on my wall. So this says, she can never go back and make some of the details pretty. All she could do is move forward and make the whole beautiful. And I remember when I found this quote and how just really encouraging it was to me. So it feels like a really cool thing that this is actually finally gonna be on my wall because I've had it for many years and haven't had it on my wall yet, which is crazy. So um, this one has a hangy thing. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and get it on the wall somehow because this feels very, very, um, Fitting, shall we say? Very fitting. I'm gonna try to put it right here. Which I think is gonna need making a ah. I think I'll make a special wire for this one. Somewhere along the line, I got these, and I don't remember how I got them, but they're really beautiful. These little cardboards, uh, cards. And each one has like a little dozen of these shell buttons. I just think they're so pretty. So I haven't had the heart to take them off their little cards and use them for anything. This one's coming apart. Um, so when I, when I was looking at one of these little bitty frames, I have long, long been looking for something worthy of this gigantic frame with this tiny little opening that's about the size of a, of a, baseball card or you know something like that so a little bit bigger than a uh, business card so I have put one of them in here I've just uh, attached it with a piece of tape to um, a little piece of cardboard stuck it in the in the hole there there's no glass or anything over it so I hope it'll be okay I don't know if it'll fade but I just think it's really pretty so let's find a place for this I've collected a good bit of ribbon over the years, and I saw some ideas I really liked on Pinterest, and so I decided to do something similar. I have raided my husband's stash and um, got a couple of dowel rods. They're all fairly fine, because as I realized, some of these ribbons have very fine little holes. So um, I thought for a while about using wire, but it didn't seem to be solid enough, so <laughs> thankfully he had some dowel rods and a saw hanging just hanging out there handy so and another thing I've done is that when I tried hanging them uh, some of them would unravel so I went ahead and for those of them that are open I went ahead and stuck a pin in each one to hold them so they don't unravel down the wall because what can happen is that if you pull on one its neighbor can come loose as well so it's if they're not still brand new with the plastic on, I wanted to go ahead and make sure they had a pin stuck in them so they didn't unravel. So what I'm gonna to try to do is put them in this frame, which I think is going to require a hook on either side, and then we'll see what could possibly go wrong. <laughs>
my shelf to go work it along in here. And as it turns out, he had helped out a friend and they had given him a bunk bed, which was made out of maple-ish or something like that, I don't know. So he thinks he's got some boards that might work for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put up some uh, hooks and get ready for the boards because I think just having one board all the way across for the little things, because I don't want to keep things on this surface because my, I have a cutting mat that I will probably use here. And if there's stuff in the way, <laughs> then a couple of inches of it will be sticking out the front. And I find that a little annoying. So um, I'm thinking that being able to get some things up off of the counter will be a good thing. So, um, yeah, let's see if I can get this, uh, see if we can get the shelf in place and see how that changes things. I'm pretty happy with it so far. There's, obviously there's always tweaking to be done. I love the blue tape in a frame. That makes me so happy. The um, glue gun and this, ha this glue gun has a detachable cord. So the cord is right here. Um, I've got a spool of, an old wooden spool of beautiful, beautiful thread right there. I've got the old buttons right there. It's just such an interesting juxtaposition and I love, love, loving the textures and the colors. So I am really happy with how this is going so far. Let's move on to that shelf, shall we? One of the things I've been wanting to do is buy old shoes and give them a new life. Uh, I want to create some fun and funky styles. And so somewhere along the line, I bought um, Angela's acrylic leather paint with that in mind. So I've got these colors and I'm gonna go ahead and put them out on the shelf. And we're gonna kind of get a feel for where everything goes and we'll make it up as we go along. But I'm really happy to have these and I want them out where I will remember to use them because I think painted shoes and there's so much possible with a pair of shoes. I have not even scratched the surface. I have painted maybe one pair of shoes. Loved how they turned out, um, but I need to do more of that. I really need to do more of that. So I've got some colors. I'm going to go ahead and put them on the shelf because I really am hoping that having them out will remind me to do that, to paint some shoes. Okay? <laughs> Let's paint shoes! Okay, so I have taken my uh, favorite markers and put them in some glasses and some jars. I've also, I've got crochet hooks. I don't know why, I don't really crochet. And these little clips came with something which I think will be kind of useful. So I've separated them out by color uh, as well. So let's put these in place. I don't know. I don't know necessarily always know where to put things, but the beauty of it is, is that you can put it somewhere and if you don't like it there, you can move it. <laughs> so, it all kind of works out. My favorite colored pencils are Prismacolor. I love, love, love these. And somewhere along the line, I think it was uh, some sort of a sale. I don't remember somebody was getting rid of their collection of Prismacolors and they were being offered for a fraction of what they usually are. They're usually, <laughs> they're usually about a dollar a pencil. All right, let's see, who is it that's winding now? out where I can use them downstairs but since I have more <laughs> I may take the time at some point to go ahead and sharpen these so that I have them available at my fingertips up here as well because since I have them I might as well make it so that I can use them because they are really wonderful to use so I have again I've got them out in uh, little jars and again I'm going to add them to the mix because they're useful and beautiful <laughs>
loving, loving, loving how it looks so far. Now what I'm going to do next is um, move the yarn up into here. Um, initially when I thought, I, I saw this idea, I saw a different idea on uh, Pinterest and decided, and it kind of sparked an idea. So I thought about if I were to take a Chanel stem, put it through the bobbin and the thread that match, uh, do something on the bottom to keep them from falling out and hang them, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> but um, it's going to take a while for Chanel stems to get here and I don't really feel like waiting that long so I'm going to just go ahead and put them on the shelf. Maybe at some point down the road I may combine them up like that but truth be told I think I would really rather have them on the little shelf. I think it would have a neater appearance to have them on the shelf as opposed to hanging around underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and try that and see how it looks. <laughs> I love this so insanely much. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> I love that it's orderly. I love that it's colorful. I love that there are a couple of things that are out of storage finally after a long time. Uh, the clock was the clock we used in our tiny house and I haven't had it up on a wall since. I found it in a box a little while ago and found some batteries, stuck them in, and believe it or not, it works. I, I didn't even have to set it. It set itself. It's so cool. This little star has been in a box for many years and a friend of mine made that and gave it to me and I love it. I can see that there might be some straightening going on from time to time, but there's not a lot of, I mean, this is a building that's, that's old enough that it doesn't need to settle or anything, so I don't think that'll be an issue. I really love the maple shelf. I've got some other maple in here, so it kind of makes, it's a kind of cohesive with the room, and having all of these things out where I can just grab something and go and use it. I've got the thread out. I have leather paint available at my fingertips. I have glue gun. I have <laughs> markers, colored pencils. I am, oh, on the other side of the room, I have fabric paint just right at my fingertips. I am really falling in love with this studio, not just because it really appeals to my aesthetic, which it does, but also because everything's right there. And, um, yeah, the neighbors can be a little bit loud, but I've got um, I've got a laptop up here now, so I will be able to have music. I am just loving it. And who knew that pegboard could be so beautiful? <laughs> this is the surprise to me. I might just kind of keep an eye out for little bits and pieces. You know, I mean, there's still space if there's something that seems like it needs to be in the room right at my fingertips. It can go on the wall, no problem. Uh, I am about at the end of my hooks, so if I decide something else needs to go on the wall, I might just visit a big box store and pick up a peg or two, because I think I'm, I've just got a few hooks left. I have three hooks left. <laughs> I think I planned that just right. So there's, um, you know, there's no need to fill every nook and cranny. It doesn't have to be crammed full, but what I'm loving about it, what I'm really loving about it is that it does have this um, quality of being so me and so useful at the same Thank you for finally, the man, I swear the man has mowed the yard three times. It's not that big of a yard, but he has been mowing like all day. You know, it makes him happy, so what can I say? I am absolutely loving how it turned out. Absolutely loving how it turned out. I have, um, I've got all kinds of wonderful supplies right at my fingertips, and it's possible pretty much to make whatever I can dream up in this space. So let me give you a little bit of a, let me just show you a, a little bit closer. Let's take you a little bit closer. Okay, let's see if I can show you around. There is my little sewing station. And this is actually a cabinet door that I'm using for the countertop here. 
And what's beautiful about this is that it works really well as a light table. If I put a light under there, I find that very useful. The, uh, the base is from my husband's drafting table, and so he's loaned that to me for a while. We'll see how long I get to use it. My pegboard has all of the glorious stuff on it, which I really love. A tonic chair left over from our restaurant. There are three cabinet base cabinets that um, my dad had in a storage unit and he didn't want them anymore. He didn't want to pay the storage unit price cost for them, so we put them on casters and they're here. Uh, we helped out a friend and we were um, doing some fancy stuff with countertops. He gave us this piece of butcher block countertop as a result. The kitchen is the kitchen out of the schoolie. It's got a blue cabinet that is um, it's an antique I found at the Restore for $100 and gave it a coat of paint. I literally stood behind a couple and they were looking at it and they said, oh, it's so it beat up, it needs so much work. And I just don't think, you know, I just don't think it's worth the trouble. And I was just, you know, I was standing at quite a distance, but I could hear them because they were speaking loud enough I could hear. And I was so grateful <laughs> when they decided they didn't want it because it makes such a great little kitchenette. We got the little vintage fridge, made to look vintage fridge. Um, one of my favorite things about this kitchen, I, I haven't spent a lot of time with this recently, but when I designed this kitchen originally, I um, put this little row in the back so you can store all kinds of things. Over here, we'll probably eventually, I'll either bring the schoolie oven up or find another little oven to go there. Um, Xavier has built me a shelf and I have asked him for, it's got so I can put some dishes on it, but I've asked him for another groove. So that will happen eventually. And then my adorable little kitchen will be, <laughs> um, I've got power now and eventually water will be coming. Now this is a little bit unusual on the far side. These maple cabinets are a pair of cabinets my husband made for the schoolie. And as it turns out, they work really well as kind of a room divider here. And then there's these two gigantic rectangles of light. <laughs> and what's hilarious about this is because this room is basically a bowling alley with two uh, lights, two windows and you know double doors in this end, there's no natural light on this side of the room. So uh, a while ago, I had purchased two uh, video lights, photography lights. And when they came, I was like, hmm, you know, I wonder if they would go good right there. Turns out they go great right there. <laughs> so it's like having two fake windows and basically they are kind of one all the time. <laughs> Okay, over here I have a bunch of boxes of cloth that I need to repurpose into things, or I want to repurpose. I've got silk ties, um, there's cotton scrap, more silk, what else do we have? Cotton clothing cloth, uh, Indian sari, three boxes of Indian sari cloth, uh, wool felt, what does the bottom one say? Oh, cotton. And then we've got two boxes of wool, muslin, twill, canvas on the right, rayon on the left, cashmere and linen. And then on this row, I used to be a jewelry designer, so I have gone through repeatedly and downsized my jewelry collection. But there's still some goodies in there, and so I went ahead and put those in that section. And then above that, I have, um, what is that, 10 boxes? I think the bottom row, if memory serves, is commercial, like batiks and stuff like that. And the top row is fabric that I have um, hand dyed myself. And then let me see, let me try not to trip over a chair here. <laughs> okay, up here I have artwork that I have done over the years. Um, let me see if I can get a little bit closer. That one is fluid acrylic, which I really love doing. Turns out that I really like that one. That is a drawing I did of a woman that I met and um, inspired by a portrait artist. I don't remember what his first name, Jeff Chapman, I think is his name. I met him and I was just absolutely enamored by his work. So that 
was inspiration to draw her. I don't know if I can get a little closer and see. She's just a really amazing woman. Anyway, a uh, painting of poppies that I did ages ago. Uh, I used to create art and glass, so there's some of that left over. I kept some. And then here's a little quilt, art quilt that I created years ago. Local potter. He's a really interesting guy. And then I did the um, irises with colored pencil and watercolor. Favorite, favorite, favorite artwork ever. <laughs> I mean, I have so many favorites, but this is one that has really meant a lot to me. Um, the Swans, painted by Mila Burge. You can find, if you Google her, you'll find out that she is an amazing person. And um, interestingly enough, she, she really creates artwork in a very different color scope than what I usually fall for. But when I saw this one, it took my breath away. And I was so grateful that she um, was willing to trade for some of my work. So I still look at that and enjoy it so much. Great big mirror. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and my, my hope here is to be able to use this space to create some fun capsule wardrobe things. And so having a big mirror in the space is useful. Okay, so behind the mirror, I have a four by seven pieces of foam wrapped in white cloth. And there's two of those. So they are uh, a quilt design wall. So I can t bring them out. And I can either leave them where they are and kind of spread them out a little bit, or I can actually bring them out and put them over the double doors. Seven by eight foot quilt design wall. So kind of loving that. And then we've got a painting that I did when I was in art school, which has traveled with me many, many miles. And one of these lovely little carts that are so useful. So, ladies and gentlemen, gentle folk, this is my happy place. Okay, the table. There's a table in there. The heart of the home, so to speak. And this is a cherry table. We found it at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. I think we paid about a hundred and something for it, solid cherry. I thought about painting it, but I probably won't. <laughs> it doesn't really need, I mean, the finish isn't perfect and that's fine, um, but it needs to be serviceable. It needs to be useful, not gorgeous. So uh, it is absolutely that. And you can see, <laughs> one of the dog toys and you can see I've got eight project boxes under there so that's uh, oh and the laptop at the other end I've got a little bit of artwork here that will probably go in the kitchen before long so that's a quick studio tour and I am really really loving it I love how the pegboard turned out I love how the room is turning out I love the potential that the space holds I love the fresh autumn air and that I'm getting a quiet moment in between barking dogs and lawnmowers <laughs> to finish a thought finally. And so, yeah, thanks for coming along with me on this joyful tour of my studio where I talked about and showed you how I created this pegboard. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Isn't it fun? It's just so much fun. Okay, now I have some loud neighbors. Loud neighbor dog. Okay, behind the mirror, you'll see this big, oh boy, here we go again. Is it time for confession? <laughs> I actually put the wall all together and then decided I really made a mistake when I didn't film that process. So um, I think while we're here, I might as well include the video of me taking it all back apart so that I could do it once more and this time on camera. 